Hello everyone, it's Jeanette Camping here from Henry Stewart Events and I'm delighted to welcome you to our latest webinar, Thrive Enterprise Speed and Scale with the Cloud Native DAM. Now I'd like to welcome our speakers, Alan Porter from Nuxio and Nick Barber from Forrester Research. Thank you both for joining us and over to you, Alan. Thank you, Jeanette. Uh, it's great to be here and thanks to everybody for taking time out of their busy days to be with us today. Um, and I'm delighted to also uh, have Nick Barber from Forrester join me today. I really wanted to start off by talking about content. Content and rich media content really defines our experience today in the digital world. The more we do online, the more important content really becomes. Um, and I guess the question we really need to be asking is, are we delivering the right content at the right scale and speed that we need to? And I know, Nick, you have some interesting stats and research around that in your slides that I am obviously don't want to preempt here. But I, I would just like to sort of get your thoughts. Uh, are you seeing more interest or more focus on rich media delivery as part of the content experience from the uh, the clients that you're talking to at Forrester? Oh yeah, uh, totally. Uh, because <clears throat> particularly now uh, in the midst of this global pandemic, uh, digital experiences are effectively the only way that uh, brands and companies can interact with people. So there is this focus on creating great digital experiences and, and underpinning those digital experiences is content because a digital experience without content really is, it's, it's literally staring at a blank screen. Um, so that idea of focusing on, great, on, on making compelling content, engaging content, rich media content is so, so important to creating those compelling, uh, those compelling digital experiences. Yeah, very true. And I think one of the things that we've, we've certainly found at Nuxio, and, and I've actually heard this and at, uh, from other folks and uh, on conferences and so forth, is, you know, unfortunately, DAMO or digital asset management sort of tended to have this uh, reputation as the place where your assets sort of go to, to die. I heard somebody the other day on, on a conference presentation refer to it as a, a, a storage locker where they're, you know, they put their assets in there and then they forget which shelf they put them on and they're buried at the back and they never go looking for them again. Um, but we really need to change that. And, you know, particularly as, we, as you said, as things are more important in terms of assets and rich media experiences today that uh, we're really looking to move away for, from being that storage locker to the dam being more of a distribution center and a place where your assets go to live. Um, again, is this something that, that you're seeing that uh, really that the dam is becoming much more centered to the, the enterprise overall and driving that the whole enterprise customer experience as opposed to being just a place for to put pretty pictures? Oh yeah. It's one of the things that's happening with DAM is it's, as you say, moving beyond being the static repository or, or place where assets go to die to being kind of the lifeblood of a lot of organizations and creative teams because it's, yes, it is that repository where the content is stored and organized, but it's also moving upstream to facilitate content creation through workflow capabilities as well as moving into the downstream to prep assets for delivery and hand them off to other systems for delivery. So it's gone from, you know, again, being that static repository to really being something that is core to uh, creative teams and really enterprises uh, at, at, at in general. Yeah. I, I agree with that wholeheartedly. I think uh, this drive to sort of a more enterprise-wide dam is, is certainly something we're seeing in the market and an area that we're uh, getting a lot of engagement around. And uh, a part of that, obviously, is the, the need to do it at a greater speed and greater scale. So with that, uh, Nick, thanks for those great answers. I'm going to hand the, the drive over, driving over to you uh, for you to go through your uh, excellent presentation. I, I look forward to listening to what you've got to say. All right. Well, thank you so much, Alan, and thank you to the Nuxio and the Henry Stewart team for having me today. I want to start out with a little bit of a story uh, and talk about how we have seen customer experience stagnate. Uh, and you might say, well, how do you know? How do you know that customer experience has stagnated? Well, every year, Forrester conducts uh, quite in-depth surveys, and we take a look at customer experience. And in the next slide, I want to show you what 
the trend line has be has been for U.S. customer experience. And if we look at that, uh, we see in 2018, actually 0% of companies created an excellent customer experience. In 2019, 0% of companies have created an excellent customer experience. And in 2020, uh, organizations have created a customer experience. Um, so one of the things that we see here is that um, most of those companies are falling into the OK category. One of the things that's really challenging is that these great customer experiences um, really differentiate a lot of companies. And we know in the midst of this pandemic, uh, if you're not investing in the digital customer experience and customer service, you're really not positioning yourself well um, for, uh, for this post-pandemic world. Now, what are the old world digital experiences look like? Well, this is actually a picture inside of one of the, the guard towers at the Great Wall of China. Of course, prior to this pandemic, one of the things that was really a passion of mine was traveling, you know, when we used to get on airplanes and see people face to face. And uh, this is what old world digital experiences and even some organizations today still make their experiences like. Uh, these bricks in this wall are cemented together to withstand the test of time. And that's how a lot of us were architecting content. Maybe some of us are still architecting content that way. But we need to think about it differently. We need to think about new world digital experiences. And these new world digital experiences look much like this Lego town. If you can see closely, that town is made of Lego blocks. And we could take those Lego blocks and use them to build a spaceship or a race car or something else. Or we could swap out a window or a roof or a doorway. This idea of creating reusable content and content components, atomized content, is very important to help advance, advance that ability to reuse content and also create atomized content, which builds the foundation for personalization. So rich media is important across the customer experience lifecycle. And if you think about the way that your buyers, your consumers interact with you, they often go through these steps of the customer life cycle. Discover, explore, buy, use, ask, and engage. And in each of those segments of the customer life cycle, rich media plays a really key role. You can see here in the discovery phase, this is oftentimes in the marketing phase, interactive campaigns or humorous videos. While in the post-sale environment, you're looking for quick start tutorials and ways to get up and running or troubleshoot common problems. And rich media can come in and help there in each stage of the customer life cycle. But it doesn't work so well when your content is a mess. <clears throat> we give an example here of these content silos. Think of them as the different systems inside of your organization. Oftentimes you've got, well, content over here in this silo. And then that content got transformed in another silo, but the changes didn't sync up, so you've got another version. And we've got version two of the finalized asset. And then it's finally like, use this one. This is the one we're using for our campaign over here in this other silo. And Time and time again, I talk to organizations on a daily basis where they are grappling with this challenge around having content across multiple silos. And when one piece of content gets updated in one spot, it doesn't get updated everywhere. It creates a disjointed feel. There's version issues. You even run the risk of publishing a wrong version. So DAM has entered the conversation as a way to put stakeholders on the same page. We find that organizations turn to DAM to manage the creation, production, distribution, and retention of rich media content. So audio, video, images, even 3D elements and compound documents. And Alan, as you mentioned at the beginning, yes, DAM started off 
as a way to store content. But now we see it sort of rising into the management where it's applying AI to understand sentiment or descriptions of content. It's also beginning to reach up into the upstream creative process where we're seeing content workflows, task assignment, review and approval become a part of the dam. And then additionally, prepping assets and content for delivery. And this isn't just delivery to web channels, it's not just delivery to mobile channels, but it could be delivery to emerging channels. It could be delivery to digital signage, voice assistance, connected cars. I was even speaking with a company that had a connected grill, so they needed to deliver content to that display on that connected grill. Some very recent research from Forrester, one of the things that we found is that if you're not investing in digital customer experience today, you as an organization, you as a brand, you're gonna fall behind. So back in April, really in the depths of the COVID pandemic, we asked services companies, we asked them, what are you hearing from clients about the shift in their business priorities? And they said, there are three areas that are growing and there are three areas that are slowing. In terms of the growing areas, remote workforce support, not surprisingly, everyone had to start working from home overnight back in March. But look at digital customer experience at number two and customer service at number three. This is in stark contrast to the three areas that are slowing around marketing, sales, and product development, where organizations have said, it's important for us to enhance our digital customer experience because we wanna be able to serve and retain our customers right now during the pandemic. So this is something that if you haven't made the business case for investment in digital customer experience, here's the slide that should be able to uh, convince those people at your company that we should be investing in digital customer experience right now, right now in the midst of this pandemic. So how do you make that case for DAM? How do you build that case? Well, we've come up with a, a couple of pieces that are so important for building that business case around DAM. One is it's about starting with efficiency. DAM tends to drive more efficient reuse and use of content across enterprises. So when you're looking at building that business case, start with efficiency. We can get content to market faster. We can reuse more content. We can enable enhanced visibility into processes. So you can identify bottlenecks. You can understand who's working on what when. It's also about considering brand consistency. I spoke with one organization where they said we had our CEO stand up in front of thousands of people and behind him was the wrong logo for the company. It was an out of date logo for the company. Had they been using a dam that established that single source of truth and created that trust, that would have been something that could have been avoided. And the dam also eliminates rights issues around reuse. We spoke with one company in the uh, CPG retail space and they said, we've actually done the same photo shoot across multiple geographies multiple times because one business unit doesn't have access to another business unit's uh, image library. So they said by, um, by one opening up the dam to an enterprise audience, they're able to reuse assets better and they're also able to avoid violating licenses, licensing problems. The uh, next example I think is 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 really so important here, and it and it all has to do with AI. And one of the things that we know about AI is that for high volume, low complexity tasks, one bot can do the work of three to four full time employees. Imagine opening up your content library and your hundreds of thousands of assets or millions of assets, and tasking a single person with filling out all of that metadata. It's just not humanly possible. So this is where AI comes in and can really help. 
AI can come in and create descriptions of content. It can identify sentiment and emotion within an image or a piece of content. It can understand components. Is, are we looking at a family here? Or is this a single person? Or how might I align those images with a campaign that I'm creating? So AI is a great way to kind of scale those human efforts and get more intelligence around the content that lives in your repository. We also know that a cloud native dam has key business benefits. So what do I mean by that? Well, when you can deploy your dam in the cloud through, uh, through a, a software as a service format, you are able to unlock near infinite scale. You also can leverage the microservices that come along with that SaaS platform. So you can unlock things like AI or uh, the previewing engine or uh, content delivery network capabilities by using a cloud-based dam. And we know that cloud-based software is very important for organizations today when we ask them which of the following are the most important benefits for your firm's decision to use software as a service. They said, well, it improves our business agility. We're able to uh, potentially innovate faster because of a cloud-based deployment. We have lower overall costs. So instead of having an IT team dedicated to maintaining on-prem infrastructure, We've offloaded that to our cloud provider. We get regular automated delivery of upgrades from the vendor. We don't have to take the system down in order to install a patch or update to the latest version. There's easier information sharing and collaboration. No longer are we bound by the geographies in which our data lives, but we can push that data to the edge where our employees or our customers are. And the speed of implementation and deployment, one of the things I hear again and again from companies is we don't want to spend eight to 12 to 24 months putting this piece of technology in. We don't want to spend that amount of time. We don't have that amount of time. We need to be up and running in days or weeks, not not months. So one of the important things, I often get the question of, you know, okay, we've built our business case. We understand the key benefits of DAM. Uh, how do we convince the rest of our organization that DAM is right for us? And this is really, really important. It's important to get buy-in from your organization before you shop for a DAM. And it's important not to discount the influence of DAM users on the buying process. You don't wanna shut them out from the selection process because they're the people who are gonna be living in and using the DAM. So from a best practice perspective, it's about assembling a cross-functional buying team. And this buying team should include stakeholders from marketing, creative, marketing operations, as well as IT, and certainly some other departments as well. I mean, you may have a vision that the dam is gonna support some of the sales-based content. Bring them into the buying process as well. Because what you don't want to happen here is exclude one of these decision makers or these decision-making bodies, and then them come in at the last minute once you've done all of this work and research and say, oh no, this isn't gonna work. Take time to understand the content creation workflow and where there are key uh, pain points in the decision process. One of the things that I coach our Forrester clients on when they're looking at DAM is to conduct a content audit. And within that content audit, you wanna understand where is the content? Um, What's the workflow look like? Those sorts of things, because then you can identify problems that the dam can address. 
You're going to have to recruit champions in marketing and IT who share a strategic vision of content creation and management. This is a strategic initiative, or it should be a strategic initiative inside of your organization around getting content to market faster, encouraging content reuse, and making sure that the content that you do put out to market resonates with your buyers and your consumers. So having champions who are bought into this idea is going to be really key for driving a, um, a, a, a streamlined, streamlined uh, vendor selection process. And lastly, identify the key decision makers or ratifiers of this purchase and ensure they're aware of the buying process and engaged in key phases of the process like shortlisting or, pro or, or provider demonstrations. So what I mean here is tied to the first point, you don't want to assemble a buying team that uh, might get thrown a loop at the last second by someone who comes in and says, well, this doesn't support our organizational security requirements, or you're totally missing the integration for one of the key systems that we need. That really can throw the selection process into disarray. So it's really important from the start to identify what we call, I mean, everyone here is, is, is familiar with the, with the term decision maker, ratifier may be something new that that's sort of someone who comes in and and um you know holds sort of a, a special key maybe it's a, a secure a chief security officer or maybe it's uh, the creative director uh who who can hold that kind of veto power over top of a system get them involved early and you can drive more success into uh, selecting your digital asset management system all right, so what are the action items for you before we uh, get ready to move into some of the questions? One of the action items is to adopt. So first, you're gonna define your business requirements and key integrations. So what does your dam need to do and what does it need to integrate into? We talked about this idea of avoiding, avoiding creating another silo inside of the organization. So you wanna make sure that your dam has integrations into the key areas that you also either store or create content. So that might be things like Adobe Creative Cloud or your content marketing platform or your email campaign system or your product information management system, your PIM. This I think is so important to dam selection is conducting a full content audit to better understand the volume of content and who needs access to it. Can't tell you the number of times I've spoken with organizations who say we use multiple SharePoint sites, we use Dropbox, we use Drive, we've got an FTP server, some of our content lives in email. I'm sure certain people in our organization are using their own personal Google Drives or Dropboxes to store content. We just don't know how much content we have and where it lives. And this is one of the key things to kick off a dam selection process is to conduct this full content audit. So you know what content is where and where it needs to migrate to. Once you operationalize, it's about mapping the digital experience ecosystem and determining which solutions must integrate with the dam. So when we um, talk about that idea of integration, it's about not creating another island inside of the organization. It's about almost stitching together this quilt of digital experience technologies where one can seamlessly blend into the other. It's about asking dam users about their key pain points that the solutions should solve. So when we ask the key users, you're, you're typically turning to your creatives or your marketing colleagues and you're saying, what's one of the big pain points for you in terms of uh, creating content or managing content? I, before I came to Forrester as an analyst, I was a content creator myself. And if someone asked me that question, I would say, well, the metadata, 
making sure all the fields are filled out and and the content is is uh, described because while I was a creator, I wasn't a metadata and taxonomy guy. I wanted to create. So if I could offload some of those tasks to things like AI, that would have made me really happy. It's about optimizing. So it's about articulating the business case to get funding and emphasizing the efficiency that the DAM solution will solve. So we've talked about that in terms of how do we build the business case? How do we understand what uh, the efficiencies will be uh, or what we can expect from the efficiencies from the DAM solution? 